From beginner to advanced topics, this video will help you answer the most common React interview questions and be one step closer to landing that life-changing job in the software engineering field. Question 1. What is React and how does it work? React is a JavaScript library that's all about building user interfaces, which are parts of a website or an app that you interact with. Imagine React as a giant Lego set, where each piece or component can manage its own little world called state. These components can be anything from a button to a comment section. React helps developers assemble these components to create modern and responsive web pages. Question 2. What is the difference between a class component and a functional component in React? In the world of React, components come in two flavors, class components and functional components. Class components are like old school recipes that use ES6 syntax and come with features like their own state and lifecycle methods, allowing them to do more complex things. On the other hand, functional components are the modern, streamlined recipes. They're just functions that take in properties, better known as props, and spit out React elements. With the introduction of hooks, these functional components can also manage state and side effects, making them even more powerful. Real quick, if this video has been useful so far, please like this video to tell YouTube that it should recommend it to others. Question 3. What is JSX in React? JSX stands for JavaScript XML. It's a special syntax that looks a lot like HTML and is used within JavaScript code. Think of it as a magic spell that lets you write your UI components in a way that feels familiar, like writing HTML, but with the full power of JavaScript. JSX makes it easier to visualize and work with the UI components in your React applications, blending the lines between JavaScript and HTML in a harmonious way. Question 4. What is the virtual DOM in React? The virtual DOM is essentially a lightweight clone of the real DOM, the document object model, that exists in memory. Why do we need a clone? Well, interacting directly with the real DOM can be slow and inefficient. The virtual DOM allows React to do all the heavy lifting behind the scenes, figuring out the most efficient way to update the user interface. This leads to smoother and faster performance, making your apps feel lightning fast. Question 5. How does React handle data flow? React has a one-way data flow. This means data in a React app flows in a single direction from parent components down to child components through props. This one-way street approach makes it easier to understand where your data is coming from and going to, leading to more predictable and easier to debug application. Question 1. Can you explain the concept of lifting up state in React? Why is it important and how does it work? Lifting state up involves moving state from child components to their closest common ancestor, allowing the state to be shared among siblings. This technique ensures that the state is centralized and accessible, facilitating consistent data across components that need to reflect the same changes. It's essential for maintaining data coherency in complex applications, such as synchronized forms or data displays. Question 2. What is the context API and how does it simplify state management in React applications? The context API provides a way to pass data through the component tree without having to pass down props manually at every level. It's ideal for global data like theme settings or user authentication. Context simplifies state management by avoiding prop drilling, leading to a cleaner and more readable code structure. Question 3. How do higher order components enhance React components? Can you give an example of their usage? Higher order components are functions that wrap a component to extend its functionality. They're used for reusing component logic, such as adding authorization features to a component. A higher order component can take a component and return a new one with added props or state, abstracting common functionalities to make components more modular and maintainable. Question four, describe how React's reconciliation process works and its significance in component updates. React's reconciliation process is a mechanism for updating the UI efficiently. When a component state changes, React needs to determine what has changed in the DOM and apply those changes. Reconciliation involves diffing the old virtual DOM with the new one, generated after state or props changes. By identifying the minimal set of changes, React minimizes the number of DOM operations, improving performance. This process is crucial for ensuring smooth and responsive user interfaces, even in complex applications with frequent updates. Question 5. Explain the importance of keys in React lists. What issues might arise if they are not properly used? Keys are crucial in React for identifying items in a list uniquely, allowing efficient updates to the list's UI. Without unique keys, React may re-render more components than necessary, leading to performance issues, incorrect data rendering, and problems with component state management. Proper use of keys enhances application performance and user experience by ensuring that React can track and update elements efficiently. Question one, can you explain what Redux is and how it interacts with React applications? 
Redux is a popular state management library that helps you manage and centralize application state. Think of it as a big, secure vault where all your application's data, such as user info or app settings, lives at. In React Apps, Redux provides a predictable way of managing state across the entire app, making it easier to track, modify, and maintain data across different components. By using actions to update the state and reducers to specify how actions transform the state, Redux makes your application's data flow more transparent and easier to debug. Question 2. What are React hooks and can you give examples on how you might use them? React hooks are functions that let you hook into React state and lifecycle features from functional components. They were introduced to simplify stateful logic and side effects in functional components, making them as powerful as class components. For example, the useState hook allows you to add state to a functional component, while the useEffect hook lets you perform side effects like fetching data, subscribing to events, or manually changing the DOM. Hooks empower developers to write cleaner, more modular code, fostering easier reuse and testing. Question 3. How does React Router work, and why is it important in building single-page applications? React Router is a library that enables navigation among views of various components in a React app, making it behave more like a multi-page application without the page reloading. It updates the browser's URL as the user navigates through the app, allowing them to bookmark and share links to specific parts of the app. It's crucial for single-page applications because it provides a way to manage and transition between different views or pages efficiently. Enhancing user experience by mimicking traditional multi-page website navigation without the full page refreshes. Question 4. Explain the use of fragments in React and why they are useful. Fragments in React are a bit like invisible wrappers for your components. They let you group a list of children without adding extra nodes to the DOM. Why does this matter? Well, sometimes you want to return multiple elements from a component without adding a parent element for wrapping, because doing so might mess up your CSS layout or unnecessarily bloat your DOM tree. Fragments solve this by allowing you to wrap or group your components without leaving a footprint in the DOM, making your app cleaner and more efficient. Question 5. Discuss the concept of controlled versus uncontrolled components in React. In React, controlled components are like well-trained pets. They do exactly what you tell them. You manage the form data with state and update it based on user input. For example, an input form element whose value is controlled by React in this way is a controlled component. Uncontrolled components, however, manage their own state internally and are queried using a ref when you need to find out their current value. These are more like wild animals, doing their own thing until you need to interact with them directly. The distinction helps in choosing the appropriate approach based on the level of control you need over form. Question 1. How does React's concurrent mode improve user experience and what changes does it require in a React application? Concurrent mode is an advanced React feature that enhances the user experience by making rendering more efficient and responsive. Responsive. It allows React to interrupt a long-running render to handle high-priority updates, like user inputs, quicker than without it. This means that apps can feel faster and more responsive, even during heavy operations. To leverage concurrent mode, developers need to adopt certain patterns like using suspense for data fetching and understanding how to use the use transition hook to manage transitions and prioritize updates. It's a game changer for building interactive apps that remain smooth under pressure. Question 2. Can you explain the use of Suspense in React and how it complements concurrent mode? Suspense in React is a mechanism for handling asynchronous operations such as data fetching or code splitting in a more declarative way. It allows components to wait for something before they can render, showing fallback content, like a loading spinner, in the meantime. Paired with concurrent mode, Suspense enables smooth transitions and fine-grained control over the loading experience, making it possible to create highly responsive apps that handle loading states gracefully and efficiently. This approach simplifies code and reduces the boilerplate associated with data fetching and state management for asynchronous operations. Real quick, if you're getting value from this video, hit the like button to let YouTube know it should recommend this to others as well. Question 3. Discuss the concept of server-side rendering in React. Why is it used and what are the benefits? Server-side rendering is the process of rendering a React application on the server instead of the browser. This technique is used to improve the initial load time of the web pages making content visible to users faster than before. It also benefits SEO, as search engines can crawl and index fully rendered content more effectively. Server-side rendering can lead to a faster perceived performance and better user engagement, especially on slow networks or devices. However, it requires additional setup on the server-side and careful consideration of how to handle data fetching and client-side hydration to match the server-rendered content. Question 4. Explain the principles behind React Fiber and how it affects the way React updates the DOM. 
React Fiber is a complete re-implementation of React's reconciliation algorithm, introduced to enable asynchronous rendering. At its core, Fiber is a virtual stack frame mechanism that allows React to pause, resume, and prioritize work based on the importance of updates. This flexibility improves the performance of complex apps by breaking up rendering work into small chunks and managing them more efficiently. Fiber supports features like concurrent mode and suspense, allowing React to update the DOM smoothly and respond to user inputs with minimal delay, enhancing both the performance and user experience of React apps. Question 5. How do custom hooks enhance the functionality of React apps, and can you provide an example? Custom hooks are a powerful feature in React that allows developers to extract component logic into reusable functions. By encapsulating and sharing logic across components, custom hooks promote code reuse, simplify complex components, and enhance readability. For example, a custom hook called useFormInput could manage the state and validation of form inputs. This not only reduces the duplication of stateful logic, but also makes components cleaner and focused on their primary function. Custom hooks represent a shift towards a more composable and functional approach in React development, enabling developers to build apps that are easier to maintain and scale. If this video was helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. But what if they ask you about React hooks? You can answer confidently after watching this video next.